All right, let's dive back into the markets now with Alicia Levine, BNY Mellon Chief Strategist. Alicia, good to see you. Uh, since we talked last, a lot has happened. We got a, another possible stimulus plan, this one from the GOP, worth about a trillion dollars. Democrats saying it doesn't go far enough. Do you think the market might be happy with this plan, though? So I think when you have an opening salvo of one trillion and the other side is over three trillion, you're going to wind up with a really hefty package. I think in the last few weeks, the market is, has been expecting a, a final deal somewhere in the $1.5 trillion range. And that should happen in the next couple of weeks. Now, this is going to be an ugly couple of weeks because there's going to be a lot of negotiations. That's no surprise. These things often are. There's a deadline more or less around August 8th here. So that should focus minds in Washington. Alicia, uh, as part of the plan that we're seeing, uh, that the unemployment top up may go down to $200. You know, Goldman Sachs is out with an estimate that reduction uh, may pull out $200 billion from the U.S. economy. Uh, I'm guessing that's not bullish for markets. So I think as long as that there's some top off at all, it will be bullish. I mean, there is the argument that, you know, many businesses have been uncomfortable with the fact that 70 percent of workers that are unemployed and receiving unemployment are now earning more than they were working. So it's a, it's, a, it's a way of trying to balance this out. And the reason we wound up with that extra $600 a week is that the systems in the states were so antiquated that they actually couldn't start computing what, um, what unemployment should be across the board. And so we wound up with this extra 600 just to make sure that the bill passed back in March because it was such an emergency. So there's an attempt here to walk that back a little bit. I, again, as I said earlier, like if your opening salvo is $200, you're gonna wind up probably a little bit higher than this. You know, in the end, what the, what, the, what the Senate has come up with is fairly generous from what you would expect from a Republican Senate. And I'll just remind you guys that, you know, Mnuchin two weeks ago already was supporting direct checks to households. And in some ways that's the most important thing because it comes directly in and it's pretty quick and you don't have to worry about antiquated systems at the state level. Alicia, I want to ask you about something crossing the wires here regarding the Federal Reserve. And I'm wondering if it's why the market is trying to already bounce back a little bit three minutes into the trading day. But the Federal Reserve is going to extend various emergency liquidity facilities through December 31st. Initially, Fed was optimistic that it could wind those down around the end of September. But again, they're going to extend those through the end of the year. This includes um, corporate credit facilities like the Main Street Lending Program. Um, do you think the market's going to read that as something positive or, or will investors say, you know what, the Fed knows something we don't know, things are going to get worse before they get better? Look, I, it's, it's interesting you pointed out because there was actually another monetary cliff coming up at the end of September. We talked about the fiscal cliff at the end of this month. There was a monetary cliff. You know, when all these programs were put in place on the fiscal and monetary side, this was thought to be at most a three month pocket that the US economy had to get through. By the Fed moving the deadline to December is just a re an open recognition that the recovery will take longer and businesses will be under pressure longer because the virus has not been extinguished and is in fact spreading throughout the country. So it's positive that the Fed is there to support businesses. It's negative in the sense that it's, you know, that it's going to take longer for companies to get back on their feet. But that's the reality and we all see it, so. Alicia, I don't see many bullish catalysts on the horizon for August. I see retail earnings probably going to be really horrific. You have another jobs report that might be weaker than, than the last jobs report. What do you see? And, and August is typically a volatile month anyway for markets. Do you see a, a potential sell-off brewing? Yeah, Brian, that's a great point. You know, August is a tough month and is usually a tough month. And we just have a lot of things that can go wrong in August, not to mention some of the valuations that we've seen in the last few weeks, which have tended to really get a little bit away from reality. Not that we think that the market's going much lower, but there is a place here for consolidation. Look, the election is going to start mattering somewhere in August when we have some version of the convention of the conventions. And, you know, there is just a lot of positivity baked into the market right now. So, yes, August could be tricky. 
Hey there. I want to ask you about the dollar and specifically, we've seen the dollar very weak recently um, and at the expense of the euro mainly, but also broadly. And then we have a situation, it looked like last week when we were debating or when the EU officials were debating the stimulus, that um, when they finally agreed, finally agreed on something, it kind of paves a way for maybe a more fiscal union in Europe. And then we got Goldman out with this note on gold saying that the U.S. dollar's reserve currency status is somewhat in jeopardy. How do you put this all together? What do you make of it? So I think the weaker dollar is down 9% since the highs of March when we had that spike is really a reflection of a couple of things. The first is that the rest of the world is growing better out of the downturn, in particular Europe. Europe is coming together fiscally, which we actually never thought possible. We had hoped we would get a, a, a fiscal stimulus in Europe coming into the year in 2020. We could not have known about the pandemic, but it's good to see they were able to do it. And also, you know, it's we're just the U.S. is printing a lot of debt and ultimately that will weaken the currency. With that, we see the rise in gold and they kind of go hand in hand. I'm not willing to say that the U.S. currency as reserve currency is at in threat yet, but it's clear that there are pressures working on the currency. It may have spiked too low in the short term, but we think this is going to be a trend going forward. Alicia, do you have an expo any exposure to gold right now, whether it be the mining stocks or some sort some ETFs? What about gold? We've actually liked gold for about a year now. And part of the reason we've liked gold is because if we felt it was a way for investors outside the U.S. to hedge some of their risk portfolio, because they couldn't really get yield, even buying the U.S. 10-year where it was by the time they hedged the currency cost, they weren't getting much of anything. So gold was a way to hedge your risk assets. In addition, just technically, the, the, car, the gold has already taken out the highs of 2011. And just technically, when you take out the old highs and you get that nice sort of, you know, moon landing in the middle, it's a signal that it can go much higher. So technically, it looks really good as well. Alicia, how do you play gold? We had an, uh, an auction CEO uh, on yesterday or president discussing uh, people are, are inquiring about gold coins. I have no place to put gold coins in my place right now. What's the best way to do this? Yeah, I mean, probably with an ETF or the gold miners. I prefer the ETFs because but, but when you go when you buy the, the mining stocks, you also then have to factor in a business. Right. So it's like it's a second order problem that you have to manage. So we, you know, we think that the ECFs are just a fine way of doing it. But yes, you know, it's very hard to buy gold bullion, um, and actually, there's no room to store it. That we all have that, especially in New York City. Who has the room to store the gold? No Alicia, room. <laughs> BNY Mellon's chief strategist. Thanks so much for being with us. Good to see you. Great to see you guys.